Hello everybody, it's Peter here again, Peter Beresford from Shaping Our Lives. I just want to tell you that this is the second, the second of a series of Shaping Our Lives filmettes, little films about user involvement, how to do user involvement, or indeed how not to do user involvement. Let me just remind you, Shaping Our Lives is a national independent, user-controlled, user-led organisation, network and think tank. We're all of us service users, we're a very diverse range of service users and our aim is to try and make it possible for people who use services, health and social care services, or are entitled to them, or have a need for them, to have as much control over those services and supports and over their lives as is possible. And in this series we're going to try and look at a range of different things which can help that be possible. And we're not going to do it in too serious a way, although the message is always a very serious one. How we can have control over our lives. How we can have as many life chances and opportunities to be who we can be as is possible. And we're going to try and keep it simple. Now this time uh, we've chosen to consider the issue of regulation. I'm going to come on to talk about user involvement in this, but I'm going to start with regulation. Now, regulation is a word that hit public services, health and social services particularly, I don't know, about 20 or more years ago. Uh, and it's really interesting. It's one of those terms which kind of maybe has got flipped on its head because the whole idea, what they said it was about, this regulation, was trying to make things better for service users. So if we want to get a, a handle on where this all starts, it's people talking about, people as policy makers, talking about how can those of us who need some support in our lives from services, how can we make sure that those services are decent, safe, reliable, good quality services? And the idea was that we'd achieve that really by regulation. Now, uh, I don't want to be too jocular, too light-hearted and I don't be too serious here but if you think of the word as I've tried to regulation what is it you think of first you think of rules and regulations and rules that's a difficult term isn't it because rules often means having to do things being bound to them being tied to them and maybe that's part of the problem with this idea of regulation which was meant to make things better but I want to suggest can be a little bit more complicated than that so let's, let's go back a bit. In fact, this is something that's long concerned us in shaping our lives. So people started talking about having regulated services that will be better. But of course, who was it having these conversations? It tended to be people like politicians, policy makers, professionals and researchers. The people who kind of already were running the services, which not necessarily were doing quite what service users wanted. So the point is, we kind of started with their ideas of what regulation should be about. What kind of rules and regulations would make services okay? And what this actually meant was that a whole load of other words and ideas came into the package, which we might think could have some difficulties. So this is when they started talking about targets, about measures, about standards about outcomes and what they did was they decided that if you wanted services to be of a certain good quality then that's how you would get it you would identify a series of measures and standards and outcomes outcomes they I think used to mean what would come out of having the service uh, and you would judge them by these standards problem was though who decided the standards well obviously it was the people who had power and already were involved. That tended to mean the old style policy makers and professionals. So these people started to set the standards and really that's been the picture ever since. And we got what you could kind of call bureaucratic standards, uh, goals, uh, targets, whatever you want to call them. Now, obviously, everything to be any good, you have to know what you're aiming at and you have to have standards of quality. You know, uh, 
that goes for everything in our lives. You have to know how long a foot or a meter is, you have to have measures, uh, and you have to know whether or not you're matching that. But of course it's not quite so simple when we're looking at things that are meant to be there to help people. Because if one lot of people are deciding what the measures of quality or targets should be, and they aren't the people they're actually for, well who's to say it's the same thing? And we know in fact from research over the years that the kinds of things that service users value aren't necessarily the same as the things that managers and bureaucrats value. So there's a bit of a loose fit here already from the start. In fact, very early on in Shaping Our Lives, we did a project, our first piece of work, on what we called user-led outcomes to try and find out what things people wanted as service users. And we found out they were rather different from what the professionals wanted. Indeed, we found that people tended to want a range of different things. Each person had their own particular preferences. But there were some common things that people valued in services. And these tended to connect with what we could see as their human and civil rights. So there's a bit of a problem here with measures and targets. Whose they are, what they're for. Not only that, but it's one thing to set targets and measures, and it's another for them to be uphold. It's one thing to say to people, you've got to do this, another to make sure that they will. And of course, once someone says to you, these are your rules and regulations, sometimes, some of us at least sort of feel, oh, well, I don't fancy doing that if they're going to force me or tell me to do it. It kind of can create a sort of resistance. But the problem is that whenever you try and write down in detail all the things that need to be done, even in a better world than we actually live in, it gets kind of problematic. I mean, I know of people who live in residential services, which are passed to be fine, because when the visits are made and the conversation is held, uh, on that day everyone's kind of saying it's okay but I know of such places where one of the claims to it being a good service is that there is a lovely garden you can go into yet yeah, maybe you'll hear from someone they've never been in the garden the door is locked and they can't get in or you'll hear that there are standards for cleanliness which mean uh, as they're interpreted by staff uh, in some residential setting the person isn't allowed to make their own cup of tea in case they breach hygiene rules these are not very useful standards. They're also not very easy to enforce because inspections don't take place all the time and they take place at particular times and then you can present things in a certain sort of way. And service users are often very nervous about saying what they actually think because they may be worried, well, that, this is what I use, this is where I live. What will happen if I criticise it and that gets found out? People might tick me off or do nasty things to me. All these we know can be real truths. So there is a problem with regulation. The, problem, the biggest problem is that regulation was introduced to make sure that standards run by services that were not publicly accountable, that's to say more often private commercial for profit services would keep to the straight and narrow. This hasn't necessarily worked. Also there is a problem, of course, that you set targets for a service, but these may not actually be the targets that are in line with meeting people's needs, giving them respect and all the rest, but just to make the organisation work. And we've seen some terrible examples of that, like the Midstaff's Hospital, where many people died. And they died because the hospital's staff and managers became preoccupied uh, with having standards to make them a success, rather than to look after people. Now, I want to say something very different. This is what it is, and this is where we really come on to user involvement. If you want people to have the kind of support they want, the kind of service that they want, what better way of finding that out, keeping a check on it, than by, quite simply put, asking them. If we want to know if things are working out all right for someone else, if we want someone to check with us how our life's going, there's no alternative, really, to asking the person themselves, putting the person in a position where they can answer. I would say that if we want to make sure that things are working out OK, that the support that's being offered is the right kind of support, that it's still the right kind of support, that it could be made better in this way or that, it isn't by ticking boxes, having forms, doing questionnaires, making occasional visits with or without announcement. It is by talking constantly to the people for whom that support is intended. 
And it means doing that in a way where they feel that what they say is private, anonymous and safe, where they have the confidence, perhaps with advocacy, to say what they really feel and mean, where they know what could be possible, so they're not talking from low expectations and low standards, and where that information directly obtained from people in a good and safe way is what shapes what happens for the future. And of course, you've got to talk to everyone. I don't mean literally everyone, but you've got to talk to all the different groups and kinds of people that that service might be for. Whatever their ethnicity, their gender, their sexual orientation, their age, their class, their culture, their belief, their past experience. However assertive they are, if they're gentle, if they're quiet, if they're frightened about saying things that are negative, or if they're happy to do so. And I'm suggesting that user involvement, supported by help with self-advocacy, peer advocacy, and sometimes professional advocacy, is the best way of making sure we have the standards we expect, the service we want. And it's not going to come just by setting down a whole list of ideas of what's needed, worked out by experts who never actually would use that service. That's the point I want to make here. You can, of course, have regulation that involves service user involvement. I think that the best system of service user involvement is one that is mainly reliant on listening, listening and listening to what people say they want over and over again. hope that's clear. All the best for now. Cheerio, everybody. Uh, and let's keep involving as many people as we can in as positive ways as possible. Bye.